Good morning, everybody. It's Eric from the Reptile Room. Today we're building a bioactive enclosure for a customer. First things first, I've got this little zoom ed enclosure, just your classic little front opener. Now this is going to have a young gargoyle gecko going in it. So an adult gargoyle gecko, you would want an enclosure larger than this. There's a model that's 18 inches, 18 inches, and then taller than this one yet, 24. Um, but this is just going to be housing a young one. So we're going to start off with this 12 by 12 by 18 inch tall enclosure. Now the first thing I got to do is get a nice peel and stick background on there that I've got set aside. And I absolutely hate applying these things because <laughs> it's damn near impossible to not get any bubbles in them. But I'm going to try. So the first step for this peel and stick enclosure is going to be to take our Exoterra and pop it over on its front. Just like that. This is the surface that we're adhering to. This, uh, this sticks to the outside. Like so. Okay, so I've got this uh, Klingon background in here now to give it a nice aesthetic. Uh, now, I don't trust static cling backs all that much, so I have added a little bit of tape to this just to hold it in place as an extra layer of insurance. But the next thing we have to do is make a drainage layer. Uh, in tropical environments, you need to have a little bit of a water column in there, but you don't want that sitting in the dirt or it just becomes muddy and icky. Uh, so I'm going to throw some LECA balls down there and some landscaping fabric. Let's move on to that. I got my handy dandy bag of LECA. I got my landscaping fabric. Let's get her in. Alrighty, we've got our drainage layer in there and ready to go. So now we start the fun part, and that's building the ecosystem in there. Now bioactive ecosystems function by having living plants, lights to feed the plants, uh, and uh, isopods and springtails living in the substrate. Those isopods and springtails will eat the gecko poop and uh, they will break it down into food for the plants, which the plants will then use to grow. Makes a complete cycle, it's pretty neat. I've got this snake plant here that's a really good fit for this enclosure. And we've got some substrate, we've got some moss, we've got a nice little bio kit, and we've got this piece of cork bark here. So let's fandangle all that around till things look good and then backfill it with some substrate. Our snake plant and cork bark are in place, now we just gotta deck it out some more. Now we're decked out with some climbing structure. So next up we've got our cleanup crew in here. This container here is full of springtails. Hard to pick up on the camera because they're little guys, but these are going to help break down waste within the enclosure and feed the plants. And then these are dairy cow isopods. They're going to do the same thing, but at a larger scale because obviously they're quite a bit bigger than the springtails. So let's get those guys in there and they can start going hard at work, keeping things nice and cycled, keeping things nice and clean. There we go. Alright, so now that we've got our janitors in there, we just gotta do some finishing touches. Okay, and the enclosure's all done. This is for a young gargoyle gecko, and the phone's ringing, so we're... Okay, so the enclosure's all done. We've got some low-power UV light on them, we've got a snake plant, we've got some lovely things growing in there. Uh, we've got our isopods hunkered in, and she's all decked out. And the resident in here is going to be a little gargoyle gecko. This is what it's going to grow out in until it outgrows it before it moves into something bigger. That's your new home, bud. Wow. I realized I'd forgotten to make a proper outro to this video while editing, so instead I'll bring you this short visual story of rejection followed by despair. I'll see you all in the next one.